So today we're going to be learning about the present progressive. The present progressive, unlike the simple present that we've already learned, is that it's happening right now. So simple present, something that I do is that I teach. I teach every day, you know, you see me. However, present progressive is what I'm doing right now. And right now, I am teaching. For example, which one of these do you think is an example of present progressive? A crying baby or baby's cry? Yeah, it's the crying baby. Because the baby is crying right at this moment in that picture. While babies cry, um, I'm insinuating with the circling gif that it's something that happens throughout the day. When trying to make present progressive, we're going to be using um, in to add on the end of the verbs. So stand becomes standing, and sit becomes sitting, walking, teaching. How about jump? Yeah. Um, hey, can you come up here for a second? Thanks. Just stand right here. So the auxiliary verb be is used for making sentences in present progressive forms. So right now I am teaching, you are all sitting down, and he is standing. You can go sit back down. So right now, who is standing? Yeah, I'm standing. Simone is standing. Um, let's practice this for a bit. Everybody group up with a partner and quickly talk, go choose something that someone is doing in the classroom. This person could be you, a friend, whoever you're talking to with right now, and then that person has to guess who you're talking about. Then you get one try and then you switch. Switch. Yeah. Um, when referring to multiple people, um, Jenny, can you come up for a second? Can you jump with me? What are we doing right now? Yeah, we are jumping. Thanks. Awesome. Uh, you can go sit back down. <laughs> um, so, how about if you want to go make a question? If you want to act like what I was did before with what are we doing? However, um, when forming a question without a question word, there's some movement going on. In present progressive, the auxiliary verb is moved in front of the subject when asking a question. For example, over here, this fella is confused by what he's seeing. Is she dancing? She's dancing. Um, as you can see, the auxiliary verb is switched with the subject to make the question. This is the exact same if you're talking, asking the person who is dancing herself. So, are you dancing? I am dancing. Um, the only difference is how B changes depending on who is talking. So, are you and I am. There's also different ways to make negative formation in case the question they ask is not correct. For example, this guy looked at this dancing girl and thought she was dying and asked, Are you dying? The girl, of course, is not dying. This, and so, not is inserted into the sentence. And it is inserted after the auxiliary verb, but before the main verb. verb. So it's, I am not dying. Are you dying? I'm not dying. This is the same if you talk to someone who's not the girl. Is she dying? She's not dying. So now we're going to go do today's activity. The name of the activity is what's going on here? So we're going to be given an image that's moving like this image. And we're going to write down and describe what is going on in this image. For example, she is dancing and he is walking. We're given four minutes to do this, and you got to write and describe as many things as you think is important on that piece of paper. Then you will be given a similar image that will have some parts of the image that are the same and some parts that are different. You will then compare the, Im the new image and the, piece and the words you've written down on the piece of paper with um, the image. 
So in this image, we can see that there's no man walking in it. So this means he is walking is not similar. However, both images have a dancing girl in it. So he is dancing is what they have in common. Then we're going to go write it on the board. So she, like this. Are you ready for the activity? Here's picture A. Here's picture B. So, what similarities do we have in these two pictures? Yeah.